before we get started with this video, I now sell merchandise. So if you're interested in buying a t-shirt or a mug, I have a link to my store in the description. I really appreciate anybody that purchases any one of my products. How y'all doing today? It's your boy Jermaine from Shovel Nose Hogs back with another video. And today we're going to be doing an updated video of disabled morph combinations in a Western hog nose snake. So hopefully I got all of the combinations that have been released or that we know about. So let's get ready for this video. Uh, so first let's talk about what the Sable morph is. So the Sable is a recessive gene and it's a mel melanistic gene. So melanistic means increased amount of black pigmentation. So it's usually a darker snake. Um, it was originally discovered by Dan E.B. in Montana. And as you can see, there's a lot of variation in terms of sable. So you have the traditional, very dark sables, as you can see on the left-hand side. And then in the middle, you have a green sable. And on the right-hand side, you have a reddish sable. So whenever you combine yellows, greens, and reds, it does influence the look of a sable. So before we get into the recessive morph combinations, I always like to start off with the two incomplete dominant traits, the, the two that we know of, the conda as well as the arctic. So on this slide, I just have visual representations of a conda, a super conda up top, as well as an arctic and a super arctic at the bottom. So let's go with the sable combinations where you combine that with the conda. So on the left-hand side, we have a sable conda, so the conda gene basically um, influences the pattern. It reduces the amount of saddles compared to a non-conda. And then on the right-hand side, you have a sable super conda, which completely removes the saddles um, outside of the head stamp. And then when we combine arctic with that, so on the left hand side we have an arctic sable as you can see this the arctic gene lightens the background it makes the saddle stand out it also usually uh outlines the saddles with a dark pigmentation or melanin so you can see the arctic sable in the middle we have the arctic sable conda and then we have the arctic sable super conda as you can see these snakes all look different in terms of color because the sable gene is highly variable Next, we have the super arctic sable. So we have the super arctic sable, super arctic conda sable, and the super arctic super conda sable. So very unique snake. Uh, before I saw them in person, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to distinguish a regular super arctic and a super arctic sable, but it's clearly a difference when you see it in person. And the cool thing about it, some of the super arctic sables actually have a bluish hue to them which is pretty cool. So now we're going to start doing the sable combinations when you combine them with recessive genes. The first recessive gene we're going to talk about is the exanthic. So the exanthic removes the yellows, the orange, the reds, and you're left with gray, black, and white. So we combine the sable and exanthic, you get what's called a storm cloud. So babies that are actually have a bluish tint when they're born. So I think the blue kind of goes away as they get older, but it's really cool to hatch out a blue hog nose. So we have the storm cloud as well as the storm cloud conda. So from my research, I don't think that a storm cloud super conda has been produced, and I'm not sure if the Arctic gene has been included in the storm cloud. So these are the only two storm cloud combinations that I think we have so far or that's been released on the internet by Dan E.B. The next combination we're going to combine the sable gene with the caramel gene. So the caramel is a T plus albino, very similar to toffee. Um, one of the key characteristics is the reduced head stamp. So when you combine these two, you get what's called a toasted caramel. So really cool looking snake, very unique. And from my research, I don't think much has been done in terms of this combination. I couldn't find any toasted caramel condas or super condas, and I didn't find any Arctic versions of the toasted caramel. So I think this is a, a combination that a lot of people can start being interested in and working it because it hasn't really been um, 
hasn't really been focused on a lot in this community. All right, next we have the Sable combined with the Albino. This was on my last PowerPoint slide. So um, Sable and Albino, when you combine that, it's called a Sunburst. So Sunburst is a very vibrant orange snake. You also see that we have the Sunburst Conda and then the Sunburst Super Conda. And then taking it a step further, adding the Arctic gene. Um, definitely get rather unique snakes. And I, I really like this combination. Definitely one of my favorite sable combinations. And then you have the Super Arctic version of the Sunburst. Not my favorite. I think the Super Arctic kind of takes away a lot of that orange pigmentation and makes it more of a pink snake. Um, but it's definitely a genetic powerhouse. Next up, we're going to combine the sable with the lavender. And this was, I want to say, first produced last year. And it was termed purple people eater. So we have the sable lavender. Then in the middle, sable lavender conda. And then we have the sable lavender super conda. And so taking it a next step, we're going to add the arctic gene to it. So called the purple rain produced by Boss Hogs. And then the next step is going to be the Super Arctic Sable Lavender, also produced by Boss Hogs. And this year, the Super Arctic uh, Sable Lavender Conda, produced by Jeff Gelwood. Very unique snake. Um, definitely one of my favorite morph combinations that involves the Super Arctic. I think Super Arctic with just lavender by itself is really stunning when you see it in person. So adding that sable gene really makes a very unique looking snake next up we're going to combine the sable and pink pastel gene so pink pastel is a t negative albino it is separate from regular albino and so when you combine these two you get what's called a sunset so you can see the normal form the conda form and the super conda form so very, very unique. Not a lot of people are working the Sunset Projects. All right, next up we have the Sable combined with the Toffee Belly. And this is probably my favorite combination with the Sable. And when you get that, you get the Mai Tai. So the first picture is actually my Mai Tai that I own. Um, in the middle, you have the Mai Tai Conda. And then you have the Mai Tai Super Conda. So very unique snake has a different orange color compared to the sunburst, almost a copper penny color. Taking it a step further, we add the Arctic gene to it. So you have the Arctic Mai Tai, Arctic Mai Tai Conda, and then you have the Arctic Mai Tai Super Conda. And then we have the Super Arctic versions of the Mai Tai, as you can see, but the first two produced by John Rice. Um, and the Super Arctic, when you combine it with the Mai Tai, it gives a more of a purple snake. Very unique. The next combination is going to be the Sable and Evans Hypo. And this combination is called the Oxide. So, kind of like the Toasted Caramel, not a lot of people are working with this combination right here. I didn't find the Conda version, Super Conda version, or any of the Arctic versions on my search for these pictures. So from my understanding, I think only the, the visual Oxide has been produced. Next up, Sable and Swiss Chocolate. So... I didn't realize this combination existed until I did research for this video. And this is what it looks like. The double visual Swiss chocolate sable by Jules Tote. I'm not really sure if he named it, but I think dark chocolate would be the perfect name for this combination. Now I've seen pictures of other Swiss chocolates that were like jet black. So I'm not really sure how he can distinguish between just a regular Swiss chocolate and the Swiss chocolate sable combination. Next combination is the sable and pistachio. And this is the combination right here. So my friend Kevin Rhodes produced this snake this year. So this is 
not just a sable pistachio, this is an Arctic sable pistachio. So only one that I know of so far. So very cool combination. And I think we're just finding out that pistachio is not recessive, it's actually polygenetic. And so now let's get into some three recessive combinations that involve the sable. The first one we're going to cover is the sable combined with the albino and exanthic gene. And when you combine these three, you get the snowburst. So this was first produced by Dan Eby. Had this in my last video. Next up, we're going to combine the sable, exanthic, and toffee belly. And this combination is called the acid rain, also produced by Dan Eby. And this combination was produced this year. So very unique looking snake, almost a pinkish purplish snake. Kind of reminds me of the sable lavender a little bit, but pretty interesting to see how this snake will develop after a few sheds. The next combination is the sable caramel and Evans hypo. And this combination is called the permafrost. So I got three different permafrosts on this slide. I have the regular permafrost to the left, in the middle, we have the Arctic permafrost. And then on the right hand side, we have what possibly is a super Arctic permafrost conda. So John Rice, he doesn't know if that's what it is. It could be other genes in play as well, but he'll have to prove it out. But that's what he's thinking, that this may be the super Arctic version of the permafrost. All right, and next up, and lastly, we could potentially have a four recessive gene hognose snake. So what do we get if we combine the sable, exanthic, Evans hypo, and caramel? We may have this right here. So the one on the left was produced by Prestige Corns. I actually did a separate video on this combination right here with more pictures. I'll leave a link up top if you want to see that. And then we have this other picture on the right produced by Kevin Rhodes, which could potentially be all four of these genes. I don't think either one of the breeders that made these two snakes are 100% sure. Um, so this could be this four gene combo. It could be other things added to it. We don't really know. They have to prove them out. But that is it for this video. Hopefully y'all enjoyed. I don't really think I missed any combinations that I know of. One that I know I didn't include was the Sable Lemon Ghost, but I couldn't really find any really good pictures. I know Jeff Gelwood, he's still working on that project and he hasn't released a lot because he hasn't got it exactly to where he wanted it to be. But that will definitely be in the next installment of the Sable Morph Combinations. But if you like this video, leave a like at the bottom, um, leave a comment, appreciate it. I'll see y'all for the next one. Peace out. And I now have a Patreon account for those who want to support me even further. Here you will have access to exclusive videos, giveaways, as well as discounts. The link will be in the bottom in the description. And if you purchase Repi links, feel free to use the discount code SHOVELHOGS to receive 5% off of all purchases.